Good morning, everybody. It's me, Sophie from sophie-world.com, and it's time for our Friday story time. So, a couple people have asked, who are you and why are you doing this? <laughs> so, just to let you know, I am a party planner in the Bay Area who specializes in children's activities and children's parties, and I do a pretty extensive library program and a big outreach program. Hi, Alexis. And so I just, uh, when we got put onto lockdown here in San Francisco, California, um, I thought that I would try to reach out to all of my library friends by doing a little story time through my website. So that's why I'm here on Facebook doing stories for people that I care about. So if you wanna join along, I'm so glad you will because it's a lot of fun for me, and I hope it's a lot of fun for you, too. So here we go. We're gonna get started by saying hello. I saw some people click on. I think I see that Allison and Kara are here. Hi, Allison. Hi, Allie. How are you? Nice to see you. Thanks for tuning in, Kara. And it looks like the library is here. Lillian and Rosanna and Gabby. Hi, guys. So let's get going. We are going to be reading some books about animals today. I like animals. If you like animals, I want you to go grrr, make a funny animal face. Grrr. Okay, we're going to read about being quick as a cricket. And it's called, I am as quick as a cricket. Mm. How many of you are as quick as cricket? I am as slow as a snail. I am as small as an ant. I am as large as a whale. I am as sad as a basset. I am as happy as a lark. I am as nice as a bunny. I am as mean as a shark. I 
I am as cold as a toad. I am as hot as a fox. I am as weak as a kitten. I'm as strong as an ox. I am as loud as a lion. I am as quiet as a clam. I am as tough as a rhino. I am as gentle as a lamb. I am as brave as a tiger. I am as shy as a shrimp. I am as lazy as a lizard. I as busy as a bee. You put them all together and you've got me. Isn't that fun how all of our emotions can be maybe described as animals? I think that's really cool, huh? Sometimes it's easier to say, oh, I'm as, I'm as loud as a lion or I'm as Mm, angry as a angry as a tiger you know sometimes that just helps to get those emotions out by explaining them and describing them as an animal now this book I forgot to tell you is by Audrey Wood and illustrated by Don Wood so that is I'm as quick as a cricket and it's by Audrey Wood and Don Wood now I love animals and I also love rhymes so I thought it'd be fun to sing a song about some rhymes. If you've got an animal and you want to throw it on up here in the comments, I'll see if I can make a rhyme for it. Down by the bay, where the watermelons roll, back to my home. Big old lion sitting there crying. Down by the bay, down by the bay, where the watermelons grow. Back to my home, I dare not go. For if I do, my mama will say. Did you ever see a snail delivering the mail? Down by the bay, down by the bay. Tiger who was a deep sea diver? Down by the bay, down by the bay, where the water goes go. Back to my home, I dare not go. Call it by me, my mama will say. Did you ever see a lizard skiing in a blizzard? Down by the bay, down by the bay. time when you couldn't make a rhyme. Down by the bay. You know, my grandpapa, Grandpa Yoakum, was an amazing wordsmith, which means like he could put words together like nobody's business. And I used to love to listen to him come up with stories and rhymes. So I think that's one of the reasons that I love rhymes so much is because my grandpa, ugh, he was so good at that. Well, my grandpa was not a very good ballerina, but the little mousy in this book definitely is. And this is a story called Angelina 
Ballerina, and it is by Catherine Holaberg and Helen Craig did the illustrations. So Angelina, Ballerina. This is for any of you who've ever dreamed of being a dancer. Angelina, Ballerina by Catherine Holabird and Helen Craig. More than anything else in the world, Angelina loved to dance. She danced all the time and she danced everywhere. And often she was so busy dancing that she forgot about the other things that she was supposed to be doing. Uh-oh, look at her mom, look at her dad, look at Angelina dancing on the stairs. Angelina's mother was always calling up to her, Angelina, it's time to tidy up your room now. Or, please get ready for school now, Angelina. But Angelina never wanted to go to school. She never wanted to do anything but dance. Oh, let me get those pictures in there. there. Come on over here, picture. There she is. Look, look at her fabulous room, you guys. Oh, and all she wants to do is dance. One night, Angelina even danced in her dreams. And when she woke up in the morning, she knew that she was going to be a real ballerina someday. When Mrs. Mouseling called Angelina down for breakfast, Angelina was standing on her bed doing a curtsy. For school, Angelina was trying on her mother's hats and making sad and funny faces at herself in the mirror. You're going to be late again, Angelina, cried Mrs. Mouseling. But Angelina did not care. She skipped over rocks and practiced high leaps over the flower beds until she landed right in old Mrs. Hodgepodge's pansies and got a terrible scolding. Oh, Dear, 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 dear. Dear, 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 dear. Take a look at her dressed up, isn't that funny? Oh, and then here she is. She's getting a scolding from Mrs. Hodgepodge. I bet Mrs. Hodgepodge worked very hard on those pansies. At playtime, she twirled and spun across the playground so fast that none of the little boys in her class could catch her, and they were all very cross. After school, she did a beautiful arabesque in the kitchen and not over a pitcher of milk and a plate of her mother's best cheddar cheese pies. Oh, Angelina, your dancing is nothing but a nuisance, exclaimed her mother. Oh, poor Mrs. Mouseling. It's hard when your daughter is dancing all the time. She sent Angelina straight up to her room and went to have a talk with Mr. Mouseling. Mrs. Mouseling shook her head and said, I just don't know what to do about Angelina. Mr. Mouseling thought a while and then he said, I think I might have an idea. That same afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Mouseling went out together before the shops closed. Poor Angelina looks very sad up in her bed, doesn't she? The next morning at breakfast, Angelina found a large box with her name on it. Hmm, let me show you this large box with her name on it. Uh, what do you think might be inside? Inside the box was a pink ballet dress and a pair of pink ballet slippers. Angelina's father smiled at her kindly. I think you're ready to take ballet lessons, he said. Angelina was so excited that she jumped straight up into the air and landed on one foot in her mother's sewing basket. Oops. Look how cute she looks in her dress, though, huh? The very next day, Angelina took her pink slippers and ballet dress and went to her very first lesson at Miss Lily's ballet school. There were nine other little girls in the class and they all practiced curtsies and plies and ran around the room together like fairies. And then they skipped and twirled about until it was time to go home. 
Congratulations, Angelina, said Miss Lily. You're a good little dancer, and if you work hard, you may grow up to be a real ballerina one day. Oh, you know that's exactly what little Miss Angelina wanted to hear, huh? Look at all the nine little girls dancing. And there, there's Miss Lily telling Angelina she could be a ballerina someday. Angelina ran all the way home to give her mother a big hug. I'm the happiest little girl in the world today, she said. And from that day on, Angelina came downstairs when her mother called her. She tidied her room and she went to school on time. She helped her mother make cheddar cheese pies and she even let the boys catch her on the playground sometimes. Angelina was so busy dancing at Miss Lily's that she didn't need to dance at supper time or bedtime or on the way to school anymore. She went every, way, every day to her ballet lessons and worked very hard for many, many years. Until at last she became the famous ballerina Mademoiselle Angelina and people came from far and wide to enjoy her lovely dancing. There she is. Let me see if I can get Angelina dancing on the stage. Look, there she is. She's dancing on the stage. Isn't she beautiful? And that is the story of Angelina Ballerina. Well, I thought that it might be fun to sing a little song about being happy, just like Angelina. So, if you're happy, let's clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. That's my favorite, go back. I love to stick out my tongue. I don't know why. Maybe I was a doggy in another life. I don't know. Okay, I wasn't a dog in this book, though. This is a story about mice. And this is by my favorite author, Leo Leone again. And it's called Alexander and the Wind Up Mouse. Alexander and the Wind Up Mouse by Leo Leone. There's Alexander. Isn't he cute? Help! Help! A mouse! There was a scream and then a crash and cups and saucers and spoons were flying in all directions. Alexander ran for his hole as fast as his little legs would carry him. All Alexander wanted was a few crumbs, and yet every time they saw him, they would scream for help and chase him with brooms. Oh, poor Alexander. One day, when there was no one in the house, Alexander heard a squeak. 
in Annie's room. He sneaked in and what did he see? Another mouse. But not an ordinary mouse like himself. Instead of legs, it had two little wheels. And on its back, there was a key. Who are you? said Alexander. I'm Willie, the Wanda Mouse, Annie's favorite toy. They wind me up and make me run around in circles. They cuddle me, and at night I sleep on a soft white pillow between the doll and the woolly teddy bear. Everybody loves me. Oh, well, they don't care very much for me, said Alexander sadly. But he was happy to have found a friend. Let's go in the kitchen and look for crumbs, he said. Oh, I can't, said Willie. I can only move when they wind me. But I don't mind. Everybody loves me. Alexander, too, came to love Willie. He went to visit him whenever he could. He told him of his adventures with brooms and flying saucers and mouse traps. And Willie talked about the penguin and the woolly bear and mostly about Annie. And the two friends spent many happy days together. But then, when he was alone in the dark in his hideout, Alexander thought about Willie with envy. He sighed, why can't I be a wind-up mouse like Willie and be cuddled and loved? Sometimes that's hard, isn't it, when other people are getting cuddles and love and you feel like you're on the outside and nobody likes you. One day, Willie told a strange story. I heard, he whispered, that in the garden at the end of the pebble path, close to the blackberry bush, there lives a magic lizard and he can change one animal into another. Do you mean, said Alexander, that he could change me into a wind-up mouse like you? That very afternoon, Alexander went into the garden and he ran to the edge of the path. Lizard, lizard, he whispered. And suddenly there stood before him, full of the colors of the flowers and the butterflies, a large lizard. Is it true? Is it true that you could change me into a wind-up mouse? Asked Alexander in a quivering voice. When the moon is round, said the lizard, bring me a purple pebble. Wow. Pretty neat lizard, huh? For days and days, Alexander searched the garden for a purple pebble. In vain, he found yellow pebbles and blue pebbles and green pebbles, but not one tiny purple pebble. At last, tired and hungry, he returned to the house. In the corner of the pantry, he saw a box full of old toys. And there, between blocks and broken dolls, was Willie. What happened? Said, Exale uh, said Alexander, surprised. Willie told him a sad story. It had been Annie's birthday, and there had been a party, and everyone had brought a gift. The next day, Willie sighed, many of the old toys were dumped into this box. We are all to be thrown away. Alexander was almost in tears. Oh, poor, poor Willie, he thought. But then suddenly, Something caught his eye. Could it be? Yes, it was. It was a purple pebble. Look, do you see the purple pebble? Right there. It's like it was meant to be, huh? All excited, he ran into the garden, the precious pebble tight in his arms. There was a full moon. Out of breath, Alexander stepped near the blackberry bush. Lizard, lizard, lizard in the bush, he called quickly. The leaves rustled and there stood the lizard. The moon is round, the pebble found, said the lizard. Who or what do you wish to be? I want to be, Alexander stopped. And suddenly he said, Lizard, Lizard, could you change Willie into a mouse like me? The lizard blinked. 
and there was a blinding light, and then all was quiet, and the pebble was gone. Alexander ran back to the house as fast as he could. But the box was there. But alas, it was empty. Too late, he thought. And with a heavy heart, he went back to his hiding place in the baseboard. Something squeaked. Cautiously, Alexander moved closer to the hole. There was a mouse inside. Who are you? said Alexander, a little frightened. My name is Willie, said the mouse. Willie, cried Alexander. The lizard, the lizard did it. And he hugged Willie, and together they ran to the garden path where they danced until dawn. There they are, they're dancing. Seems like mice like to dance, huh? First Angelina, and now Willie and Alexander. Well, I thought that we would do a new goodbye song. And this goodbye song, I'm gonna say goodbye to all of my friends. So it goes like this. Goodbye, River. weekend and I will see you on Monday with more stories, more songs, and more fun stuff. Bye everybody!